Welcome to this week's edition of The Passion of a Digital Artist. And here he is, that passionate the digital artist himself, Jeff Muir. Hello, everybody. How are you, Xavier? Oh, it, it, you know, now that I remember how to work the camera, it's been so long since we blogged. It's It's been a while. It's been a while. And... The reason for the for this little um, hiatus that we took, it kind of was a reorganization kind of thing for me. Plus, um, I'm just getting. I've had two grandchildren. One one was living with me for for the first two years, moved out, and then on my second grandchild, um, my with my other uh, my son uh, moved in. So it's been a lot of time putting in, helping out with babies and whatnot. But She's uh, getting to be to the point where I'm getting back into doing more things and my son's going on and living his life. So what's been happening now is I've been doing more artwork and it's come time to blog. Uh, this is Xavier. Uh, Greetings, everyone. Partners in Crime. We're at a, we've done 172 blogs. This is our 176th blog and we've been blogging for five years now, I think it is. So, yeah, six years, six years. Six years, we're in our sixth year? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think we've gotten to the point. The first thing that um, what 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 we what I tried to do is eliminate as many ums from my talking as possible, even though I just did one. But also uh, get more comfortable with each other uh, in front of the camera. And I think uh, now, after you know this amount of time, I think we're gonna turn it up a notch. I'm gonna come up with a really good name. Maybe even have a logo. Uh, really up the blog quality. Uh, we're going to blog uh, anywhere between once or twice a month, but probably once a month because we're really going to put some time in it. I'm going to put some time and effort into it and then work with work with Xavier. He doesn't have to put too much time and effort considering his talent is his wonderful voice. But I also want to push that too because I'll let everybody know out there that he's thinking seriously uh, or maybe trying to do some voiceover. So if anybody knows anybody or wants to do anything and give us, uh, you know, a shout out here or there, because we all know how wonderful Xavier's voice is. Thank you, Jeff. Yes. Uh, that brings me to this week's uh, blog. What do we got cooking this week? Well, uh, what I did, what really got me back into this is the Milwaukee Bucks are building a new arena. Me being from Wisconsin, uh, it was used to be the Bradley Center, but they're building a brand new arena. I was uh, in a freshman in college, the, the first when they started building the last arena. So you really know your age when you remember the building of the third. This is the Milwaukee Bucks third arena that they're building. And one of the things they're doing is there's a, a, a company on Facebook. They're called Sports and Art. And this company is run by three women. Uh, and they had an idea to represent and uh, find and connect artists with the sports industry. Because all these multi-million dollar arenas and all these stadiums that are being built uh, to make them uh, become and, and succeed, the artwork that fills the walls in all these places uh, it's one of the things, it's a need, and when you deal with, like, especially this particular contest that I've applied for, I set my portfolio in, and also I created a piece for, specifically for the submission of what I can do. Uh, one of the, one of the most famous bucks initially was Oscar Robertson, the big O. One of the reasons why I picked it is he, uh, played... I believe for Ohio State, he's from Ohio, and he played um, his college basketball career uh, here, and then eventually became a Milwaukee Bucks Buck, and led them to their only two finals appearance. In 1972, they lost, and in 1973, they won the NBA championship when I was just a young kid. I remember going to games and whatnot. But it was him and, uh, at the time, Lou Alcindor, who eventually became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is a much more uh, current day figure where Oscar Robertson was at the end of his career when uh, Lou Al Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was at the start of his career. Uh, but they both won the championship. So I wanted to do, I went through a lot of, lot of different photographs. There was a couple cool ones, but this one, 
uh, one of my the, my favorite uh, my favorite paintings that I've done personally is my self portrait where I was trying to be Jim Morrison. Uh, it was I call it Days Gone By. Uh, it it was uh, black and white, and it's a 40 by 60 format. So I did this in 40 by 60, and then produced it. So if you can imagine this as a 40 by 60 uh, white canvas background type thing. I haven't, I produced it and submitted it for that, but if they need me to produce it, I did it so that I could put it on the side of a building. One of the great things about doing digital art is if you know what you're doing, you understand color, how color translates to paper, how it translates to plastic, how it translates to canvas. Uh, that is my background. I, I was a commercial artist and I was always printing things. So I understand the colors within the computer and the translation to get it out of the computer and make it what it needs to be. But in this case, it's black and white. So you just basically have to have the neutral colors going. But I also produced it so that it can be blown up to uh, just a normal wall size. But if you wanted to put it on the side of a building, you could. So I'm kind of excited about this piece. I really um, wanted to put... The, the concentration and the passion into what he was doing using the brush strokes and I really enjoyed doing that. Um, if you look, you get in there, you really can see the brush strokes and how they how I use them. They're larger uh, depicting that, but it really gives the intensity of, of him taking that shot. And then if you look, I, I really enjoy doing the basketball because you've got the normal pattern and although this particular shot doesn't show exactly the pattern it picks up the brush strokes so beautifully so instead of it being you can see instead of it being it just picks the it doesn't pick up the the brush the the, the circles of the basketball it's it's but it also picks up when you back off it picks up the bat the patterns of the circles of the basketball so it's really a kind of cool thing. So it was a lot of fun doing. Um, I, I, did, I was able to do this particular piece in about two and a half to three days worth of work. So I really enjoyed doing it. I submitted it with all my other work, uh, especially my Brett Favre painting that I did. That was also, hopefully that's helpful. And that was a submission. It's kind of got me back into the groove. Um, everybody knows, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna compliment you on it. That's a magnificent piece of work there. Thank you. Um, one, of the, one of the aspects of me getting back into it, I've really, um, I've, I've decided what, um, everybody knows that I've worked on the 52 Shades of Blue. I'm getting back into that. I know what I'm going to be working on for the next painting, and I'm going to be getting back into that. Hopefully within the year, I'll have the 26 final paintings. I've, I'm at one, and I'm going on two. But once you get into something like that, you, it really kind of gets rolling. So I'm working towards that, plus a couple commissions, which are wonderful. I love to do commissions. Anybody wants me to do some sort of painting for them, I work at a reasonable price. I'd like to, you know, overall, um, it's not like uh, you're purchasing one of my um, social media series or whatnot. Uh, I just basically uh, work so that uh, the average person can afford what I'm doing. I'd like to get paid somewhat for what I do, but Overall, I've done probably about 10, 10 11 commissions uh, throughout, you know, last last couple of years. So if anybody's interested in one, uh, contact me. But with that said, anything else to put in there, Xavier? No, just our thoughts and prayers for all the people in Florida and our continued prayers for those in Texas who have so, you know, suffered the wrath of well, of I mean, Harvey and are suffering the wrath of Irma. It's it's good that we live in the United States because it, Florida had such an evacuation type thing. But when you think about all the people in Cuba and all the people in Haiti, it's really hard to get off an island, right? You know, to evacuate. And I think that's always why. But you got what is it, Jose coming in uh, almost on the same path, and it's just it appears similar. Yeah, it, it, it appears that uh, it's not going to be a good not a situation at all. But I'm praying for my sister and my nephew and my brother-in-law down in Florida because they were lived in Boca Raton. And I was glad to see that it went a little bit west, came on that side of Florida. And Miami area, which is Boca Raton, a little bit north of that, wasn't getting quite the storm surge that they were supposed to get initially if it would have hit the east coast.
So we'll keep our fingers crossed and our thoughts and prayers focused on all those folks down in Florida. And again, our continued thoughts and prayers to all those folks in Texas and the Houston area. And yeah, whatnot. let's just hope like the, the, you know, the, the death toll stays and just people are inconvenienced. Exactly, exactly. Property can be replaced. It's, it's heartbreaking, but property can be replaced. Yes, and so. you know, the relief efforts seem to always be strong. We, right. we all love to give. Yep. All right, have a good week, folks. Yep. See you soon.